Hmm. All right, everybody. That's uh, welcome. Happy uh, Happy Wednesday. It's hard to believe already. Uh, this is Web Three by Three. This is going to be your weekly interactive conversation around the business side of Web Three. The focus of this program is to develop uh, engaging and interesting case studies and analyses of uses of Web3 and how you as a business owner might be able to deploy this for yourself. So we're here to provide insights, some thoughts, the questions that aren't being asked, not for the get rich quick crowd, not for the crypto bro crowd. This is more for business owners and folks who want to learn about Web3 and Web3 marketing, how to apply it and how to benefit from it. So I'm joined as usual by my hosts, Michelle Peterson Clark, the content marketing queen. Hi, everyone. And Mike Neubauer, your ops guy. How's it going? Glad to be back after a week sabbatical. Yes. How's Mikey. the new How's the new edition, Mike? Going great. Uh, everybody's good. Everybody's healthy. Uh, a little sleep deprived, but give me an <laughs> opportunity to keep up with uh, trending articles, which we'll discuss today. Mike Excellent. is uh, welcoming a newest member of the family, and we are happy for him. So this will be uh, sort of interesting to see how you last here, Mike. <laughs> I'm going to take us into story number one, if that's okay. The uh, Actually, this is, for those who are care, episode three of season two, and we are titling this episode, What is Amazon's Crypto Game? And so with that, we have a story out of CryptoNews.com. This is Amazon to enter the crypto NFT market with gaming initiative. So the brief is that there's a plan right now. Amazon is working on a plan for customers to play crypto games and claim free NFTs on the Amazon platform. So they are expecting to announce this in April of 23, and Amazon has been posting roles for Web3 developers for over a year now, going back into 21. So before we comment on this, uh, thoughts first from my colleagues. Michelle, you want to leave this off? Um, well, <laughs> Amazon. You know, the first, uh, was it three years, I think, they only sold books on their platform, nothing else. They perfected how to do that. And then they added, I think, DVDs it was. Um, and then they did that for another couple of years. So now everyone thinks that Amazon have always sold everything all the time. But in actual fact, that's not true because they started with one thing, got good at that, added another thing, got good at that, right? So now we know that they're good at selling and promoting and distributing a large amount of items. Why will them getting into the Web3 game be any different? I mean, I can imagine that they um, are thinking carefully about this. In fact, if you read the article, they... Um, advertise for Web3 developer type positions back in 2021. So they are slowly and have slowly worked out what it is that they're doing and where um, they're going to go with it before they launch it. And interestingly, this story isn't from Amazon. It's through people talking about what they know about what Amazon are looking at and talking about. So Amazon is keeping mum on this. I agree with you, Michelle. And Mike, I see in the comments field here, Zach, thanks for joining us, my friend. Uh, Zach is asking what chain we think this launch will be on. Mike, you want to comment on this? Yeah, so uh, reading it in the article, um, Avalanche is definitely going to be one of the ones that they go with. And, you know, look, we we, we touch on this pretty much every week, but I think it's, imp it's, it's such an important point to keep reiterating here. Um, these major companies are going to dip their toes into this in some way, shape, or form. It's inevitable. Um, and uh, while we really like the decentralized format, there's going to be centralized aspects that these companies are going to try to implement into their existing way to do these businesses. The gaming component of it is probably just another theory or, I guess, strategy to keep people on their platform. Thus, be able to provide ad placement to those people who are playing those games um, charge those companies to get placement on people who are interacting with those in an effort to earn those NFTs. Um, it, op it also opens up the marketplace for them to sell advertising space to NFT projects uh, because they know that that's a very targeted audience that you know they could easily leverage. Um, where this goes, I guess we'll wait and see. Um, if I were a betting man, I would say that at some point, 
uh, you know, Michelle, you touched on all the products that they've started with versus where they're at now. Owning these NFTs will get you an inside track to specific marketplaces and products within that platform. Um, that is something that I think that they truly don't understand quite, I guess, exactly at this point. But those of us who are here trying to dissect what the technology can provide, that only leads me to that that path of victory for them. So, Mike, so you can imagine... Please. Sorry, sorry, Mark. You can imagine, though, can't you, that Amazon Prime will have an NFT. And yeah. the things that you get from, you know, whether it be maybe they'll have three different ones. Maybe they'll do a Prime Standard and a Prime Medium and a Prime Premium or something like that. And you will get certain things from it, not just your shipping for $6 a month. Um, and so I can imagine that there will be a whole lot of those sorts of things available as well as they get going. One of the things that I like about this, we've talked a number of weeks, haven't we, about companies that have gone, oh, yippee, let's do a Web3 strategy, let's drop some NFTs and make some money, and they've had no strategy, no plan, no, um, not much thought went into it. Now, the fact that we know that Amazon have had and have been looking for developers for two or three years now, that they are actually going to develop something that I think straight out of the gate will be phenomenal. Um, so, and Michelle, I got I to gotta comment on that, though. Do we? Is this just another Web 2 pretending to be Web 3? At this moment, I, I, would, I would say yes. Michelle, I don't know where yeah. you're at, but I, I, I see that there's a path that they can easily just build for everything that we know about what NFTs can provide and the technology that's available today. They could easily provide, for example, a staking mechanism that provides reward tokens, right? So partnering with the blockchain, whether it's Avalanche or, you know, whatever one they want to having that prime NFT and then staking that NFT as, you know, some sort of a reward metric that you can then redeem for, maybe credits in your Amazon Prime account or shipping, or maybe there's partner programs or products that can, that can, that can jump in and provide, you know, I guess upsells to their product line in exchange for those. I, I can answer this, Mike. We're thinking about the econ platform. Go beyond this. It's the movies, right? You can, Amazon's got a whole movie arm. You can have early access to all of their, their content, if you will, or limited gated content based off the NFTs you get through the games that you play to earn. I can, there's a whole ecosystem and this comes down to platform. You nailed it. This is if, if NFTs and web three is anything other than a platform, please tell me because Amazon is king of platforms. Go ahead, Michelle. But what about things like, you know, now you can put your physical book on Amazon, but you can also have an audio book or a digital book. What about if you were able to create an NFT for your book? or your audio podcast, or your, you know, like you, you name it. I mean, I think that um, the, the sky's the limit really is to how uh, much innovation they can make from this. And Mike, what about the fact that Amazon might actually come out with their own blockchain? Well, that's a very real possibility. In fact, it might not necessarily be a blockchain that's public. I, if I were in their shoes and I was really exploring this technology, I would look to get their entire corporate structure built on blockchain. Um, and you can do that where it's, you know, it is a private chain, but you're almost kind of putting your money where your mouth is in your own corporate infrastructure. But let's not uh, let's not lose the trees in the forest, right? Uh, you know, let's look at it for what it is. What is Amazon right now? Obviously, a variety of these different solutions, web services, all of these various things, movies. It's a marketplace. And what does an NFT community need? What does it want? It wants access to marketplaces. There's no reason in the world why this can't be the first step in Amazon competing with an open sea. And right. really creating this, this exchange platform for a fee or for additional eyes on your project, this is where this is going. And then you're going to have these, these projects have the ability to market themselves for discoverability. This is potentially a game changer with an asterisk. Obviously, we know this is a massive corporation. With that comes monetary greed, 
what comes centralized elements. We have to keep all of that into consideration. But the fact that they're willing to play in this sandbox, it's a good sign. All right, Davos Mike is back. <laughs> Here we go. A couple of comments. Out of the, <laughs> I want to point out, Zach, uh, very nice. I, I agree with this. Zach says, interesting use case for NFTs. The bigger question, does Amazon release their own token and not just NFTs? Thoughts? They can do it. They could. I don't know. I would be surprised if that's their first move, to be honest. Given what's happened last year with cryptocurrencies and tokens and social coins and all of that, I, I would I would actually be disappointed if that was one of their first moves. So that's a great point. I think that Mike's earlier comment about whether they run their own chain or not is a, is a factor here. And and wouldn't that be their goal, by the way, to run the money end of the e-com as well? Uh, this, of, course. of course. I mean, look, let, let's not again, let's not confuse certain things just because they have a token doesn't necessarily mean there's a liquidity value to it. I mean, there's such a massive marketplace within Amazon, they can easily create their own internal economy, the Disneyland dollars, so to speak, right? So they can create this Amazon coin that's only applicable within that community. And then as a product that's selling on Amazon, as a brand, as a, as a company that's selling in that marketplace, you can actually take that as currency only applicable to purchase other items within that marketplace. So comment here. Thank you very much, Scott, for joining us. Scott Breen in the chat here saying that you can't mint a PDF as of yet. Actually, it's something he's working on. Minting a PDF, and this ties into something Aaron has also said. Thank you for joining us, Aaron. That will they enable creators to turn books into NFTs to allow secondary royalties? These are interesting thoughts. Well, you can actually, I, I know of a couple of use cases where people have created books with NFTs. Um, uh, as NFT, sorry. Um, so it is currently possible. So I, I can't see how it would not be possible on their marketplace. Our friend Linda Ray, Linda, good to see you. The Web Four by Four here. Uh, if they have their own chain, can they control the so they can control the sociographics, right? So competitors getting access, you can control things when you control. Once you have the chain, and God forbid the token, th it's an endless thing. I think the point is that the platform angle. And thinking of these things as a platform, if one player is going to emerge as the dominant force in a platform world, I got to agree with both of you guys. It's going to be Amazon. Well, circle it back to the first part that you asked. Is this just another Web 2 construct using Web 3 terminology? The answer is maybe, right? Like they could easily be playing that game. It doesn't is it maybe, Mike? It definitely is. But again, they are going to somehow be forced to leverage the technology if they're going to be claiming they are. Right. I think the concept that people confuse is decentralization and transparency, which is key elements of Web3. I don't think we see either one of those, no matter what they do out the gate. Um, it depends on how it's built. If they have their own blockchain, I agree with you. If they're leveraging a blockchain like Avalanche, which it appears that that's going to be the forefront, at least out of the gate right now, then they have no choice. They're leveraging someone else's territory. Right. Um, they have which the makes tools, me the money and the strength to definitely build their own chain. So... I just don't know if they want to go all in because once you once you open that can of worms, man, it's going to be very difficult to fix it if you screw it up. So I'm going to take us into story number two here because we had a lot to bang through here. This is an interesting one. We keep an eye on Amazon. We're going to talk about this, I'm sure, throughout the year. April is the expected release <laughs> no date. Um, there's a story here that Michelle caught ordinals launching NFTs on Bitcoin, sparking controversy. So there's a plan right now to put digital assets onto the Bitcoin blockchain. For those who don't know, obviously, Bitcoin being the original blockchain, it is currency related only until 2017. The SegWit upgrade, which, Mike, you can probably talk more about than I, helps us scale Bitcoin by introducing a new field. And as a result, there's now a new protocol that will allow the transfer of Satoshis in the blockchain network. So basically, you can create NFTs on Bitcoin's blockchain. And this is causing a lot of purists to push back on it. What are our thoughts on turning Bitcoin's blockchain into a Ethereum type NFT blockchain. Mike, maybe we start with you on this one. Um, you remember when Walmart was like, hey, we're going to do our Walmart fulfillment services. And they were about eight years too late to the party because Amazon had the entire marketplace. Um, this is <laughs> essentially history sort of repeating itself. You think uh, Ethereum makes it not necessary? I think there's too much traction with ethereum right now to 
make it so that Bitcoin becomes a, a legit com a competitor there. Also, the way that and I'm, I'm very I'm still trying to really study the way that they plan on doing this. You were always able to mint these or or kind of construct these non fungible tokens on the Bitcoin blockchain, but it just really wasn't utilized. Um, reason being mostly is that it's just not a practical solution. You're taking these, you know, one one hundred millionth of a Bitcoin known as these Satoshis, and you are inscribing whatever you want that's immutable, right? That's essentially what's making it non-fungible. That's what's making it unique. You're assigning it to a specific code, a number, a serial number, and you're introducing it right back into the into the blockchain, ether, uh, blockchain ether in the Bitcoin. Right. Um, much different from writing a smart contract, deploying that on the Ethereum network and extracting tokens as you so please. So mass adoption wise, not quite sure if it's going to have the same kind of freedom leeway and ability to uh, to have the same impact. Reason mostly because if you're going to go buy a cup of coffee and you want to pay in Bitcoin, are you going to be able to pay in two NFTs? I've got strong thoughts on this, Michelle. Well, before I comment, I'd love to hear your input on this. What do you think about Mike's comments? Is Ethereum stealing the, the pie here? I think the, the thing is that, I mean, 2014, I think, was the first time there was an NFT minted on the Bitcoin, uh, in Bitcoin. So it's not like, as Mike said, it hasn't happened before. Someone now has come up with a way of making it not so expensive. Um, and so I, I think it's one of those, you know, things where people go, oh, yes, that's nice, and then turn away and go back to what that, you know, we resume normal programming now kind of thing. You know, it's the news flash. Um, and then and then we move back to what it was that we're, that we're used to. Um, I think it kind of does get messy, though, doesn't it? I mean, there, there was something to be said about um, Bitcoin being the, the sort of financial marker um, of Web3. Um, and not that I'm a, not that I would say that I was a Bitcoin purist in any way, shape, or form. But but I think that there is there is benefit in having one part of. Let's face it. Sometimes this market is insane. Um, you know, Web three. I, I think that there there is benefit in having one part of it that is stable that can be used as a measurement and keeping it like that. Right. There's a comment here. Uh, Aaron Casanova, great, great point here. The let's not forget proof of work is still the method while proof of stake is now ETH's consensus mechanism. So the, the whole concept around power consumption, all that stuff that we've just escaped, we're going back into it again if this is the way it goes. Mm -hmm. I, I kind of feel like Bitcoin is money, if you will. Like that's their world they operate in. And everything else being overlaid as NFTs on chains, that is never going to work for Bitcoin. And I'll tell you why. It's not the tech. Forget the tech. This is going back to when social media platforms attract different types of people to specific platforms, right? Twitter is always a food fight. You get the cranky people. LinkedIn is the, the suit and tie crowd. That's going to be the case with the blockchains, in my opinion, where you've got a certain type of people, the Bitcoin purists who do not want to do that thing on that chain. They're going to go to the chain that they feel it should be on. And so you're going to get the cultural aspect of the actual blockchains will emerge over time so think of them as countries certain types of people are certain ways and this is how we're going to yeah. see with the crypto group i'm just guessing what do you well, think let's 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 use the business analogy because that's really the point of this show right so if we consider bitcoin to be coca-cola and we consider ethereum to be pepsi pepsi diversified and went into frito-lays and snacks and then you know they came out with pepsi clear or crystal pepsi or whatever it was called back coke tried to replicate some of those things and failed miserably right what snacks are assimilated with coca-cola none right so they can equally exist in their respective parallel paths they somewhat need each other because it's still a very very small market in the sense that you know when one of them blows up or sinks the other kind of follows suit bitcoin is really the 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 tip of the spear upon what direction crypto is is moving in 
people see Bitcoin falling, they kind of pull themselves out of crypto in general. Um, so from a business analogy, as weird or as stupid as that may have sounded, um, I don't know if Bitcoin is going to survive in that type of system. I think Ethereum has their their flag planted pretty deep there. We've seen other chains come along and try to compete with the Ethereum model. We've seen other co chains come along and try to compete with the Bitcoin model. Both of them have not been able to get to that point. Mike, I got to add to here for those. This is just the beauty of the internet. Crystal Pepsi was a clear cola drink made from 92 to 94. They discontinued from lack of sales and they are bringing it back for the 30th anniversary in, in a couple of months. <laughs> Why not repeat <laughs> failure? You make some great points. I do think that they can both coexist, but you're, they're going to attract different folks, no? A hundred percent. Just like Frito-Lay people are more inclined to be with Pepsi just because it's all under that umbrella. Yeah. Right. Lionel yeah. Messi signs a deal with Pepsi that opens him up the door for him to do ads for Frito-Lay and, and, and Lay's. Um, Coca-Cola doesn't necessarily have that. Now, right. is it possible that you eat some Tostitos and have a Coke? Absolutely. But the reality <laughs> is, is that like when you're looking at both of those respective companies, they all they both have underlying value propositions that makes them unique in and of themselves. And I don't think the blockchains are, are much different. I, I think perhaps the, perhaps the crystal Pepsi might come with an NFT, free NFT. I don't there think it'll go. help. All right. Moving us on to story, <laughs> story number three here. There's uh, This is coming out of Cointelegraph. Exploring the possibilities of Web3 Telecom. Blockchain can help companies with the telecom needs of underprivileged communities. They're talking about third world countries here. Enable people to access mobile data services without the need for traditional forms of identification and individual contracts. So there are Web3 telecom companies. This is forget about the whole transparency. Uh, this is they're trying to focus on can the blockchain be used to help speed up uh, signups, basically, for telecom. I just like the, the fact that it's moving into other spaces. We're just seeing the big picture, pull the camera back. It's not just about money and about marketing. Thoughts? It's always about money. <laughs> Always. My capitalist big it's about increasing. Florida. It's about increasing their customer base, isn't it? Currently, with um, you know, if you have to have either a passport or a driver's license or a bank account in order to open a telecom or a telecommunications account, and you do not have that, and a lot of the people in third world countries do not by uh, making this process easier in some way, and if they think that Web3 can do that, then that increases their customer base and therefore, as Mike said, ma they make more money. So this isn't about, oh, yes, aren't we lovely? We're trying to help all these poor people in third world countries be able to have a mobile phone plan with us. <laughs> um, <laughs> um it's about them going, you know, we've we've lost 5% of our customers last year. If we opened up uh, this new market, we could increase it by 90% next year. That's well, why they're thinking, doing it. I'm thinking of the no income loans from the mortgage crisis days. Yeah. Fog a mirror, yeah. sign up. There you go. All right. Yeah. Story number three, combination three and four here. How NFTs and Web3 are bringing a new content wave. This is out of Analytics Insight. The market for Web3 digital products is growing. Uh, Web3 connects directly between the creators and the audience, which we know. And so there's, they give an example in this article of Rack, R-A-C, a Grammy award-winning musician who earned $40,000 selling a copy of his one single to 100 fans. And to earn that on Spotify, this dude would have needed to have sold 9.7 million downloads. So the point is, you can make a lot more money in the Web3 as an artist, which we know. You, I'm coupling that with the ad age, which is the you know marketing award company they are now have introduced a web3 marketing award they're going to be honoring the most talented creatives in web3 technology for marketing and that includes things like video games mixed reality virtual fashion so this is out of ad age we're seeing the evolution in real time of web3 in advertising and marketing thoughts michelle this is your world content marketing queen um interestingly i just watched the on netflix the um the Spotify documentary um, about how Spotify started. And, you know, it's, it's not quite true to life, but fairly well is. 
And it, it was really interesting about how um, the artists and, you know, if, if those of you that know about the Spotify story, you'll know that um, over time and, um, you know, perhaps even more recently now with this kind of thing coming out, that artists were not happy with the amount of money that they were making and people like Taylor Swift and, you know, those sorts of artists actually pulled their catalogues off of Spotify in the early days. I think everybody's kind of back on it again now. Um but the fact that, um, and, you know, artists like this, um, you know, Grammy award-winning artist and, you know, creators in the, um, you know, digital art space and in the real art space are also able to make a lot of money um, by selling digital NFTs of their art, whether it be art that they've created only digitally or whether or not they've got real art to complement a digital piece. Um, you know, it is very difficult as an artist to break into the market of getting your art in a gallery or being in a collection and those sorts of things. And NFT marketplaces have enabled artists, a lot of artists, people to make a living from doing this now, cutting out that middleman, so to speak. Um, and I think it's it's only the beginning and those companies like the record labels and the institutions that uh, buy and sell artworks have to start thinking about how they can move to a position where they actually assist artists finding buyers for their work rather than being the people in the middle to say, well, no, because you won't take the deal that we've decided on, you can't have your piece in our gallery therefore you won't ever sell it, et cetera. Mike, what are your thoughts? Uh, well, I think it's pretty ironic about this story now, almost a year after we all met at the Creator Economy Expo, right? <laughs> so the whole concept of using this as a tool for creators has, is nothing new as far as I'm concerned because it's really where we all met. It is to uh, Amazon. Well, I mean, maybe <laughs> not. They've been hiring people for two years. Um, <clears throat> so look, I, I, again... We reiterate the same points, but again, there's some that really need to be reiterated because of their relevance. From a creator perspective, there are specific tools that you use to build your brand, right? The ability for you to have more control over your brand slash assets slash products or services using Web3 technology is very encouraging, but this is nothing more than a tool to help you build that brand or that community, right? So it's no different from you starting a YouTube channel or a Facebook page or Twitter following. This is just another arm to help you build on that community and that those efforts. There's a ton of ways you can do it. Um, and the opportunity of using what an NFT could be versus what an NFT is, is a prime example of that. Um, so for example, like, you know, the Creator Economy Expo, that was the talk of the entire event. We were all there. The Web3 construct, how Web3 is going to play a role in that type of environment moving forward. And I think one of the more interesting parts about that particular event was the technology was so new. Everybody's still trying to understand it. But you take these creative marketing minds and you put th this technology now on the table for them to utilize this year's event, it's going to be very interesting to see what types of developments and, and progressive steps were taken in people building out their brand using the technology. Um, we have other communities that we're involved in as well. Food Fight Studios has a cohort and, you know, a Web3 kind of track to their community building efforts. Um, there's people that have no idea what it is, but they're trying to build brands for themselves, Twitter, YouTube, and obviously back certain things up using blockchain technology and Web3. The more information that's out there, the easier it's going to be for people to adopt it. We'd all be remiss if I didn't mention here the decrypt article, social token platform rally shutting down. Ethereum based platform for creators launched the social tokens. They are sunsetting their Ethereum sidechain, citing market headwinds. So as the of creator yesterday. Is, what's that? As of yesterday. Yeah. 31st right. of January. Yeah. So we we all have been involved in that indirectly to directly. And 
I think that the creator economy is alive and well, but the social token aspect of it is stumbling because of this web two, web three confusion. Back to the I, same point. I disagree. Tell I disagree. You, you, you Rally was an example of a house of cards, right? You can't continue to build up if the foundation is not secure. And that foundation was only yeah. as secure as Rally was. When so you, you say- could have the best creator coin, the best economy, the best community ever, but it all leverages itself on what our friend likes to call rented land. When you say yeah. a house of cards, it wasn't a, a Ponzi, Mike. It was a real company doing real things. That the problem you used was, the p word, not me. <laughs> no, I don't. I mean, you didn't get paid out under new people coming in, or did it's you? It's not what a house of cards is. A house of cards is a, is a construct that's built where if the base of it falls out, everything falls out on top of it. Yeah, and that's exactly what happened. And the rally to- the rally token was the base in this, wasn't it? Correct. Right. Which is really, if you think about it, if Ethereum crumbles, everything crumbles from that's built on Ethereum, right? It's no different from any of that. But if the U.S. economy crumbles, then if the U.S. dollar crumbles, then everything that's built on the U.S. dollar also crumbles. It's just the state. It's just the laws of economics and the way that that things are constructed. It's no different. The reality is, is that when you have a company or an organization like Rally, and that's the one that's spearheading this and you can't get yourself out of that scenario. That's where the creator yeah. token or the economy suffers. The idea of it suffers for people who are not familiar with the way the technology is built out. I and I, I think I've told this story on this show. After that CEX event, when I met Rally at the event, I went home and I tried to apply to get my own social token. I was denied. I don't have a following on social media. So what did I do? I went out and tried to figure out how I could do it without them. And I did it. I was able to mint my own token. I provide that token to members of my community, my clients, the ones that are looking to get into Web3. That is just an element that I was able to do research and I was kind of pissed that they denied me anyway. But overall, it kind of worked out for the best because I got to understand the technology component behind it and realize that I I really didn't even need them. So this takes us back to the conversations we had at CEX and actually it was uh, Zach Fowler brought it up earlier in the chats. The platform that's built on the chain, the chain matters, right? It really makes a difference where you start your token out or your coin or whatever program or project you're going to be doing. I think that people just think that Web3 is Web3. Like it's that. It's like, but I view it as the the term sales. Like are we selling pools or are we selling Lamborghinis? Like it, it can mean a lot of things. Web3 is not a clearly understood concept and building on Web3 as a result of that is a very tenuous thing right now. Do your own damn research is the commonality, right? Like just you got to know what you're building on. Um, you know, everybody that I guess built on MySpace failed, right? You know, MySpace doesn't exist anymore. We, we got and Pepsi Clear and MySpace, uh, Crystal Pepsi, whatever. There we, we go. We're going Google through Plus. Business. Google Plus. Google Plus. All of that stuff. I mean, you know, look, overall, we're going to try to leverage tools to the best of our ability. But the exit ramp has to be there. And if it's not there, that's a red flag. There was no exit ramp to rally. We've talked about this before, that people will migrate to Web3 when they don't realize it's Web3. I think that actually might have been your quote, Mike. Uh, the, The reality is that it's still clearly delineated, right? There's not this whole Web3 thing is still clunky. It's you've got failing projects that take down other co- coins. I don't think it's going to be. I, we're not coming into the clear anytime soon, in my opinion. I, and I hope I'm wrong. But I think one of the things that we would all agree with is the opportunities that are emerging that are already here and the ones to come means that it is going to be far easier for people to onboard if they've got an idea or a following or a you know like a a business already i mean it's yeah you know, i don't think that there's been a better time for you to if you've got a passion or an idea for um you know even if even if you don't want to create a business but you've got an idea about something whether you're passionate about crocheting or knitting or travel or whatever i think that right now the ability to be able to get an audience for that which ultimately might lead you to creating a business and then earning money 
is is in almost endless right now and probably more so than any other time in history. Right. So I read an article the other day that I thought was extremely interesting. I should have actually provided it here. I posted it in the Food Fight server. Um, rather than trusting projects to help you understand what's going on in Web3, just try to understand the technology. And if you can get the trust of the technology, apes and coins and this and FTXs and all, all that's all that's a moot point. It doesn't mean anything anymore. If you understand the value proposition behind the technology and you you use that as a way to basically call out projects that are doomed to fail or that are going to rug people, your appreciation and the educational component of where this goes is going to be that much better. Mike, I love you. Nobody gives a rat's ass how the technology works, even in Web3. I disagree. I don't care. I don't I care. disagree with you wholeheartedly. I'm going to take us back in history to the uh, Betamax uh, VCR debates. Like no one knew how that tech worked or, or fiber optic cable. What right? about I a just, telephone? What there about wasn't a TV? the security implications on those that there are with this. True. There's but financial true. security implications that are associated with this, right? Like you don't need to understand the thorough intricacies of how a bank operates, but you know they have a vault. You know, they they somehow have a way to protect your assets when you put them in there. But I don't care when I swipe my credit card, what data packets are being transferred on that network. I really don't. I just know that I have to wait two extra seconds for my MasterCard than my Amex. <laughs> <laughs> so all I'm saying is, and I'm not, you know, I agree with you. If we could, that is how you call out the rugs. That is how we, we, we move this forward. People have to understand what they're getting involved. But this is the buyer beware thing where they don't, You've got bad actors. Like we can all trust that Amazon will try to do the right thing to build their business the right way, right? That's fine. 99% of the companies out there doing things in Web3, we don't know, right? I mean, this is going back to the transparency of a blockchain and what that should enable. So I don't know that people will educate themselves properly. I think that this is where a MetaMask or somebody or an Apple pay that makes it simple, that I mean, really simple, will onboard the folks. The, the app that makes people waffles. I don't disagree yeah. with you, there but you the app has to be on a system that people can trust. And that's trusting the technology. Well, right? now you're you talking traditional finance, my friend. Well, you're talking about traditional <laughs> consumerism. Your area. Right? Apple can slap their logo on anything and there'll be a line around the corner for people to buy it. Right. Yes. Understanding the technology is to the point where it makes their life a little easier. And that's kind of what I'm referring to. It doesn't necessarily get defined by one, one successful project or one monumental failure. And if you can understand that there's a gray area in between where most people, projects, and businesses can thrive, then the technology will be more adoptable. But don't expect the people to figure that out. I'm not saying that everybody needs to understand what a blockchain is, how it works, read a book, take a seminar. Like You don't need to know how an iPhone works as long as it takes pictures and posts selfies. That's all you care about. Right. I, that I agree with. And I think, I think that's, yeah, we're on the same page. <laughs> All right. So next story. <laughs> there's a uh, there's a point here about marketers are shifting investment into Web3. As This is just a fluff piece at a coin desk, in my opinion. But as major brands enter Web3, we are starting to see creativity become multiplayer. This is their term. Communities are beginning to create the stories we love to, to reinvigorate them and bring new life back. So I'll make this simple. The way Netflix has taken old shows and rebooted them like pick them up from where they left off. We're going to see group creativity bringing back uh, into the media space primarily, but web three is encouraging community creativity thoughts on this. Battle bunnies is a perfect example. It's a first community written um, community written novel, right? A fantasy novel that's derived obviously from some kind of core construct, but the reality is, is that like the entire community is the driving force behind that entire project. Some projects like to dictate, some like to incorporate. There's that term DAO that we can throw around, which gets people more involved in more of the, the, the directional avenues on where projects go. But the community element on all of this is really what is going to be behind it. And again, when you talk about linking it to another story we talked about earlier about the content creator, a content creator's whole premise is based around community building. Yeah, interesting. Final thoughts on that one, Michelle? I think, too, that 
you know, in 2021 and probably almost all of 2022, maybe halfway through the year, the tide was turning. We had, you know, I, I was told many times, you don't understand that crypto marketing is different, Michelle. Um, you know, this is th that isn't the way, the traditional way or the content marketing way, being the content marketing queen, as I am, you know, that's not the way we do things in Web3. Well, the reality is now, is that now that, uh, you know, half the market's been wiped out because no one's got any money left and they've all disappeared and perhaps some of them are now doing chat GPT uh, courses. Um, but they, you know, like now we're seeing people realising that you need to build a community, you need to turn your audience into raving fans, into people who believe in the story and follow the journey and want to walk the journey with you and when you do that um, you can create a viable business around it and you do that by storytelling so content you know content is king or queen in my um, case um, and that is how you are going to bring people with you on your journey in Web3. And so that means that what, you know, what the story is talking about is probably for, if you, we looked at articles 18 months ago, we were talking about influencer marketing and, you know, you, you know, there, how many telegram messages did we get saying I can get 3000 people in a, you know, a, a, you know, into your chat group and we can pump the coin and blah, blah, blah. And all this, like every second hour you used to get that. Yep. You're not seeing a lot of that now because that's just, everyone knows that doesn't work anymore. They're working um, on and the so chat we've got it. ebook. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Um, but, you know, like, I, I mean, I, I think that Mike would probably know this from his, um, you know, from his community as well. People want to feel connection. They want to feel belonging. And how do they do that? That happens by taking them with you on your journey, using content, using storytelling and creating communities. So I'm going to open this up for questions in the audience. If anyone cares right now, uh, Linda, you've been great. Zach, I know uh, Aaron. If anyone has any questions they want to drop in the chat or if you guys are welcome to come on stage if you'd like, we're happy to have. Uh, otherwise, the final story is going to be that there's an analytics insight piece. They've now released the top 10 Web3 influencers for 23. And it's got folks like Vitalik and CZ from Binance, Gary Vaynerchuk, a couple of common names. I just like the fact that there's now a top 10 web three thing. Like this is, this is now starting to become it's in the culture, if you will. Thoughts. And, uh, and, 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 you know, they've got, um, you know, the, we we're talking about before about the ad age awards, you know, web three awards, marketing trailblazers or whatever. There's going to be more of these. I mean, just like, you know, remember how excited everyone was in what was it? 2008 when the first internet, marketing awards came out um you know or those people that had a website you know the best website on the internet awards and all that sort of thing i mean i've always been a a bit of a you know it's i think it's okay if you actually win the awards properly but when people pay to win awards then i kind of don't think that that's a great thing but lots of people actually get influenced by the sticker or the little logo on their websites um to show that you know customers think oh they've won some awards they must be good um and so i, I think that it's you know this is kind of the top 10 or the top 20 or you know will we see a you know a web 330 under 30 or you know, a Web3, you know, top 500 or whatever. Like, I don't know, maybe. I think we will. I think the, I think the, the question, <laughs> your point about the awards don't really mean anything is what I, I think we're going with this. And I agree with that. Like, I forget what it is, the Tonys or the Grammys or one of these, like the Oscars. This is not a fan driven thing. These are, there's an organization that picks winners. And that's yeah. completely. And it costs a lot of money to be right, that... in, to be considered to be a winner conceptually that is violation of everything web three, right? That there's a large yeah. centralized organization that determines the winners. We've, where have we seen this movie before? <laughs> but we can turn it into a web three construct, right? If that organization more. has an NFT associated with it, that NFT has a DAO, that DAO then votes for who these, I hate the term influencer because I would classify that list as more of pioneers, 
because we're at this such yeah. early stage of it. But yeah. if that community has the ability to, to, to make those distinctions, it could be anybody on that list. It doesn't need to be the, the Mount Rushmore of, of, of the space as we know it today. It could be, it could be anybody. Um, so a, I think that's that an American that, reference, Michelle. Over time, um, over time, I think we're going to see the evolution of things like that turn into more of a Web3 solution. Um, and whether you, you're in Web3 or not, I mean, obviously, you know, there's AP writers who know nothing about baseball who vote for Baseball Hall of Famers, right? I mean, you know, yeah. over time, we're going to see people who know nothing about Web3 have a, have their their stake in the ground to make a, make an uh, assessment on this just because it validates whatever they have in, the, in their own respective careers. Well, um, I think that Jamie Dimon has already explained that it's a farce. We don't need to worry about Web3. Yeah, well, we wouldn't be having this show and there wouldn't be a multi-trillion dollar industry attached to it if we don't have to worry about it. <laughs> Obviously, wish- Jamie didn't buy Bitcoin at a dollar. <laughs> right. I want to throw this out there that people should remember that this show is not in any way, shape or form intended as guidance, advice or financial direction. Right. This is a business discussion for general information purposes. So as Mike says, do your own damn research. Right. This does not constitute investment advice in any way, shape or form. That being said, we're back every week, Wednesdays, uh, 4 p.m. Eastern to discuss the business angles of Web3. What are the implications? What's the happenings? We're trying to keep an eye on things because we three here believe that there's not an, an elevated business conversation around the Web3 development and beyond how do I make a quick buck? What are the real implications? Like, how do what does this mean to me? If I run a business or if I live in the world, if I'm an artist, if I'm thinking about marketing in the Web3 space, what do I need to know? So that is the purpose of this show. And we thank you guys for joining us. Final comments from Mike, Michelle. Well, I think it will at some point in time, maybe over the next 18 months, be a battle between Apple and Amazon as to who stakes the biggest claim in Web3. Interesting. And I, I hope that if that were the accurate forecast, um, they spend a tremendous amount of money, resources, and time in onboarding more people into the space because I think that only inerts to all of us who are in at the ground level right now. Yeah. I think they will. That will. I, they will. I think you put your finger on something interesting there, though, Michelle. Amazon and Apple, both humongous platforms, and that will be where Web3 plays out not necessarily those two companies, but who can maintain, run, and build an ecosystem on a platform wins this. And I, by the way, I'd throw Disney in that ring as well, just for the hay of it. All right. Thank you, everyone, sure. for joining us. We'll see you next week for episode four. See you next uh, week. Appreciate you guys joining us. Thanks for, for all, the, uh, all the comments and questions. Peace. Bye.